Sevgili seyirciler aramızda müzik var ile yeniden birlikteyiz. Müzik yolculuğumuzun bu haftaki durağı Göteborg. Burada bulunmamızın nedeni konuğum Soen. Bölge taş devrinden beri yerleşim izleri taşıyor. Orta çağda bugünkü Göteborg'un 40 kilometre kuzeyinde büyük bir ticaret merkezi varmış. Norveçliler kale yapma planıyla şehri güneye, deniz kıyısına taşır. 17. yüzyılda bir Avrupa gücü haline gelen ülkenin kralı bir adada kasaba kurar ve ismini Göteborg koyar. Bu genç şehir kısa sürede konumu sayesinde önemli bir ticari değer kazanır. İsveç kralı şehirde Hollandalı tüccarlar ve göçmenlerin yaşamasını teşvik eder. Bu yüzden şehir Hollandalılardan büyük ölçüde etkilenir. Sonraki yüzyıllarda şehir büyür, nüfusu birkaç kat artar, ticari anlamda yükselir. Şehir İsveç'in ana limanı, ...ve ana hareket noktası haline gelir. 19. ve 20. yüzyılda modern bir sanayi şehrine dönüşür. Göteborg bugün tarihinin dinginliğini yansıtan... ...sakin ama inovatif bir şehir. Göteborg'da ilk durağımız Dünya Kültürü Müzesi. Bakalım burada bizi neler bekliyor. Müze, İsveç Ulusal Dünya Kültürleri Müzelerinin bir parçası olarak 2004 yılında açılır. Müzenin dünyanın her yerinden gelen nesne koleksiyonunda kültürel objeler, faydalı objeler, doğa tarihi objeleri, sanat eserleri, fotoğraflar, kitaplar, arşiv materyalleri ve ayrıca insan kalıntıları yer alıyor. Bu nesneler 17. yüzyıldan günümüze kadar farklı şekillerde ve farklı amaçlarla toplanmış ve koleksiyon İsveç Devleti'ne ait. Müze, dünya kültürü kavramını dinamik ve ucu açık bir şekilde yorumluyor. Yaklaşımlarını kendi ifadeleriyle paylaşalım. Bir yandan çeşitli kültürler birbirinden dürtüleri bünyesine katıyor ve giderek birbirine benziyor. Diğer yandan yerel, ulusal, etnik ve cinsiyet farklılıkları ortaya çıkıyor. Bu sürecin çoğunu şekillendiriyor. Dünya kültürü yalnızca iletişim, Karşılıklılık ve karşılıklı bağımlılıkla ilgili değil. Aynı zamanda her bireyin özgürlüğü, somutluğu ve benzersizliği ile de ilgilidir. Dünya kültürü müzelerinde saklanan objeler ve eserler 
binlerce yıllık insan yaratımlarını ve yaratıcılığını temsil ediyor. Müze, ziyaretçileriyle diyalog kurarak dünyanın çeşitliliğini benimsemeyi ve böylece sürdürülebilir bir küresel kalkınmaya katkıda bulunmayı hedefliyor. Müzede kalıcı koleksiyonun yanı sıra dönemlik sergiler de yer alıyor. Şu anda Meksika kültürü sergisi var. Sergi Meksika kültürünün tüm renkliliğini ve canlılığını göz önüne seriyor. Göteborg'da şehrin en işlek meydanında Göteborg Senfoni'nin salonu Konsert Hüs yer alıyor. Gelin birlikte gezelim. Göteborg Konser Salonu 1935 yılında inşa edilmiş. Alt katta oda konserleri için 380 kişilik küçük bir salon yer alıyor. Göteborg Senfoni'nin ana sahnesi olan büyük konser salonu ise üst katta. Göteborg Senfoni Orkestrası 1905 yılında kurulmuş. Küçük çaplı bir orkestra iken 1980'lerde tam kapsamlı bir senfoni orkestrası haline gelmiş. Bugün orkestrada 109 müzisyen yer alıyor. 1300 koltuk kapasiteli ana auditoriumun düz şekilli duvarları akça ağaç ile kaplanmış. Göteborg Konser Salonu'nun akustik nitelikleri ona İsveç sınırlarının çok dışında bir itibar kazandırmış. Örneğin Deutsche Gramofon konser salonunu bir dizi kayıt için stüdyo olarak kullanmış. Konser tesisinin mimarı işlevselciliğin önemli savunucularından Nils Einar Eriksson. İçi modernist olan binanın dış görünümü neoklasik. With the rejects and lonely I bend With the beggars and junkies I welcome the pain Of a life as a target I play For the outcast from wood and a lie With the ruthless unfairness that rules on our time On the walls, driven out by the land You're mistaken the crook for the honest Why are you building your homes far away from us? Raising walls to keep us on the outside Of your meaningless life Fire up your guns
Hi guys, how are you? Fine. Uh, good. Hello. We did a good job, no? I think we did. <laughs> I really think we did. You did a good job at least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, let's start one by one. Can you introduce the band members to us? I'm, I'm Joel, lead mm -hmm. singer. Mm -hmm. I'm Martin, drummer. Zlat, bass player. Lars, uh, piano and guitars. Cody, guitars. How did you decide to be a musician? For me, I, I, you know, I decided quite late. 
I didn't know I could sing when I was... Uh, no, I don't believe that. I didn't know. You know, it was uh, not, uh, what to say, the, the, the cool thing to do. It was, uh, you know, I, when I grew up, guys were playing football. They didn't no, yeah. sing, you know? So I didn't discover that. I didn't dare to discover it until I was a bit older. And actually people were telling me. There was a mu- music teacher. Ah, said, that's interesting. You know, like, you have a voice. Try to sing. Thanks to that teacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Uh, I never decided. I think it, from the beginning it, it was a, a call. Since I was, I don't know, two years old, I've been three years old uh, playing percussion, and, and and it's always been the only thing that interests me. I mean, just I never wanted to to you know play football or be a lawyer or anything like that. Mm. I, it's and I told quite early to my parents that I either be a musician or I can be a garbage man or whatever I don't care that's the only dream that I have and they supported me all the way and and that's what I've been doing my my whole life they did good man you are you are happy isn't it to be a musician I'm amazingly happy of being a musician Uh, since already dear I'm still still in love with music you know and I, I see from your eyes that you are the same This is the joy of life, huh? How did you decide to be a musician? Well, I'm going to tell this to you later. <laughs> <laughs> this is the long story. <laughs> <laughs> Who were your idols when you were growing up? Well, my, my really, really first one when I was a kid was uh, Alice Cooper. It's, you know, I bought, I started with the albums that, you know, I'm, I'm born uh, in 1980, mm-hmm. 80s, so that was the 80s stuff that he made. Yeah, yeah. And then I started buying the stuff back, you know, wow. like Billion Dollar Babies and stuff like that. So, he was, he, he was great musician, yeah, yes, I know. Well, and so I've understood later, I didn't understand that back then, but how good all the musicians he has around him. So the music, everything with Alice Cooper is fantastic. David Gilmore, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, you know, Dave Murray and Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden. Yes. Uh, Tipton and K.K. Downing from Judas Priest. Mm-hmm. Uh, more modern players like Alexi Leo. Um, so, yeah, lots, lots, lots, lots. <laughs> yeah. He's younger. You can hear that he's younger than us. <laughs> by his answers. What was the breaking point of your musical career? I think we we are reaching it right now because even if we if we all had quite long careers and, and our own bands and have a, a past uh, and you know have been doing this for a long time, I think with this band we have uh, uh, we have we found some kind of, of uh, friendship within the band that mm. that makes everything a lot more worth doing. I mean we have the same goals and and we're really happy about, you know, having life as a musician. I mean, when we started this band, we didn't have any kids. I have four kids now. He has two kids. I mean, it's so we're... It's, we're been, it's been 20 years, eh? Yeah, so we're growing up as uh, as human beings and as a band simultaneously. And, and I, I feel I've never been happier in my life. And I think it, for all yeah. of us... And the b- breaking point is the, to find the good people together. Yeah. That's the breaking point. Eh? Yes. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very important for a group, you know. Yeah, because music is not it's not only you know because one playing shows one person can destroy everything, you know. Yeah. In the band yeah. it's very important. Can you talk about the music of Scandinavian countries? That's a tough question, but I mean the kind of music we play, we barely don't play in Scandinavia. And we do play a little bit in Denmark sometimes, but it, we played two shows in, in Sweden our entire career with this band mm-hmm. uh, this is, I think in Sweden in general I think the pop scene is huge it's a great jazz scene fantastic musicians and players yeah. and yeah, uh, fantastic know. producers songwriters and everybody is really talented but for our, our kind of music we yeah. have to go elsewhere we have to go abroad to to, uh, to play our shows and find our, our audience so and what about languages uh, you, you, you, you always sing in English or in Swedish also you sing No, we choose English, yeah, and it's very natural for us. We learn English on a very early age. So we we are more of an international I mean, band. I mean, I speak yeah. mainly Spanish. He speaks English. He speaks Ukrainian. Ukrainian. It's 
<laughs> and it's a small country, so it comes natural that you you want to turn abroad. Yeah. Abroad, that's it's good. You are that's, lucky, man. When we started the band, we immediately had that kind of goal that we wanted to play outside of Sweden. Yeah. Uh, it took it took eight years before we played our first gig in Sweden. Yeah, I mean, we have played a hundred shows in Germany, maybe, and we have played two times here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's weird. We have played four times in Slovenia. <laughs> we have played two times in Sweden. It's really weird. It is. No. This is your own country, and yeah. you give only two concerts, and they're there in Germany, 100. Wow, man. You know the saying, you cannot be a prophet in, in your hometown. Yeah, it is. But things are changing. We are doing a lot better now in Sweden, and, and we actually have two more shows now. In <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Double the amount. <laughs> the music in the Scandinavian countries is mostly more metal and uh, more hard rock, you know. Mm. They love this kind of music, I think, the audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Yeah. Uh, but then why is it? I can tell my story. I'm from Uruguay and my dream was to come to Sweden and play hard rock because the bands that I liked are from Sweden and from Norway. So I just wanted to come here and do a band and play this kind of music. Sweden is the, the level of metal in Sweden is why? the highest in the world. Why? Because of the climate? Why? Why? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think I think it is. I think it is. I think it's just six months of winter when you sit in, inside your house and you just play your instrument and it's dark and you're sad and you're <laughs> angry. <laughs> How do you describe your music? Ooh, you know, I would say that, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's uh, sometimes uh, serious, but it's also hopeful and energetic. You know that it gives hope. It's not about digging yourself down mm -hmm. and and uh, bury yourself. It's more of you know taking yeah. yourself, yeah. pushing yeah. yourself up. That's a that's a really important message yeah. that we that yeah. we bring. You you touch people. Well, well, we really try. We think yeah, that, yeah, that, that one of the the big problems with music today uh, is that nobody really says anything anymore. Uh, either people are just singing about love and, and love stories that never happened. They try to sell uh, songs that wouldn't make you think because it's just easier to listen to someone that is happy or in love and something and do your dishes or whatever you gotta do. Um, we really try the best we can to to to say something, you know, to, to, to give a meaning to the music, to unite people and to talk about the injustices and, and try to do something about it as, as musicians. And I'm going to ask it to you. Uh, your inspiration in, in the guitar is coming from whom? Gilmore is the obvious answer, but I was the, the, the first, the first Chords and, and scales were, were taught to me by my father. He's a great guitar player as well. Ah, your father. Yeah, yeah. He's he's he's more of a blues guy. That's beautiful. Yeah. And in your uh, families, is there any other musicians? On my mother's side, they they're singers. They're singers. You know, my mom was a great singer. My uh, what do you say? My Ma mother's sister was a, a opera uh, <laughs> singer. Uh, so so they're they're the singers. And genetically. It, they give you something. Let's talk about your tour uh, this year. Friday, not this Friday, next Friday we are going to, we have a four week tour in South America. So I'm going back home to play for the first time ever. Of course, Istanbul is gonna come as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, on May. In May. Mm. That's great. Tell the date. May 23rd. Thank wow. you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Ankara and uh, Ankara yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us what are the difficulties and the beauties of being a band? That you want to be on tour all the time and you also want to be home at the time, uh, having families and stuff. But I think that we are, we are as, as we said before, we really enjoy each other. I mean, maybe uh, being with each other all the time, normally you start kind of hating each other, but we, we haven't reached that yet. 
ask this question in three months. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after we have been out on tour, you know. Yeah. Now but, we have been, you know, at home for a long time, so. I mean, you must uh, enjoy in your tour. I mean, do you really want to go back home? We have Between kids. the tour? We have kids. Ah, the, ah that's <laughs> why. Uh, and wives. Then you can take your wife and your kids and go together, you know, yeah. on those. Yeah. In some concerts, then they can, they can return there. No, but if I gotta say, I think it, it's the, the older, in my case, the older I get, the more I, I love uh, touring and I, and I love just being a musician and, and just traveling around and all the stuff that I maybe hated when I was 18 and I mm -hmm. toured, ah, oh, it's another plane and I have to wait and this and that. All that I see today as just opportunities and, and, and great times. When you take decisions for something, or one is okay, or you have to be five, yes. Mm. Or three yes is, is enough. How is uh, it? Let me answer this in another way. <laughs> that I think in order to become a successful musician, you learn not to, to say no that often. You know, you have to say yes. You have to be, because you can't start with a no, right? Uh, you know, someone is coming with some ni a great melody. Yeah. You, you have to wait and let it grow. and. Right, that, and it's it's a learning process of working with each other. That yeah, because uh, if we are like band with people which think in one way, we have to support each other and uh, create idea, not to. Decorate. Thank you, guys. You're gonna live long, and you're as a band, you know. I, I, this is a very very uh, positive thing. The older you get as a group, you start to appreciate. Yeah. having a, each other much more you know you, when you're young you, you think about yeah, yeah, yeah. your own yeah. uh, goals and your own yeah. career but you get more and more thankful mm. for having each other you also yeah. start understanding that you don't have all the answers and that the people around you might have a better choice than what you think you have mm. which gives you the time to analyze any kind of melody any kind of idea and just go through it and see where we end up you know, uh, which gives you a, a, a, a, better, a better atmosphere within the band. What do you think about the digital world in music business? I think in many ways, the good things, if we say the good things with digital is that everyone can access it now. So, you know, you, people are listening to much more music today than they used to, than they didn't. But of course, sometimes you miss when you were a kid, you know, you had the vinyl and you watched the album cover and all that. You can miss that, but it's nostalgic things, you know, it's, you, we can't go back in time. I just think we are getting old to, to understand new things and accept them. I'm not, I don't love the digital stuff, yeah, I mean, but I think that I need to give it a chance. I may agree with that because digital world is now, all musicians is everywhere. But there's one thing that we miss. In the digital world, you cannot win money. The otherwise, before, you were selling CDs, you know, cassettes and everything, and it, they, it was bringing money, man. Mm. Now it's, it's finished. But there is something, though, that people, are, uh, that people are starting to understand, and it's that they, there's ways now where they buy the stuff to help the bands. And, and all the bands that maybe are smaller get the chance to be discovered and people can help them mm. so somehow we kind of share the pot a little bit more fair than we did before yeah do you have a new project new plans for us it's it's it's, it's, it's always going more albums and we don't we don't have any plans to back down you know we or we, we music, are, musical movie for example oh yeah i don't think we have you know that's i guess that's when you are when you have already made your your your uh, epi epic albums. Then you start working on your rock opera. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a few epic albums to make first. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the Turkish audience? It's amazing, <laughs> amazing. The, the first time, or the only time we played in Istanbul, and they started singing all the melodies and. And they knew the songs. So it's good. I, I really, yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Happy to hear that because it, it, it really they love music. And, oh, yeah. and not, not only, I mean, of course, the show was amazing, but the city, man. I mean, Istanbul, 
I, you know, historically, I, we only read about Istanbul in the books and, and, and you don't really know to, what to expect and you get there. And it's just such a wonderful, amazing city. I agree with you. I love Istanbul. <laughs> I can and confess. Now we are, I can confess this, you know. Yeah, I love Istanbul. And we'll see Ankara yeah. and Izmir too. We are really looking forward. I mean, I, this is not just because you're a, a, a Turkish musician, but I can assure you that there's. We talk about going back to Turkey a lot mm -hmm. within this band. It's one of those things. Yeah. Turkey, Mexico. It's just something else. You know? uh, okay. Another thing that I have noticed that is a bit special with our audience in Turkey is that they are also a bit younger it's it's in every you know but that the young people are yeah open to our music which is fantastic they yeah, seem to have yes. a very good sense yeah. so we're very hopeful for the young generation yeah, in they will be your friends forever <laughs> no but we feel like it's... like uh, there's a a higher musical intellect mm. in the younger no generation yeah, of yeah, turkey yeah. than in the younger yeah. generation yeah. of of all countries yeah, I agree with you. How do you get together and decide to be a band? I started, I have a, a, I played in other bands and then I left and wanted to start a new band. And I had wrote some songs and then I met Kim, my guitar player that doesn't play anymore with us. And then we met Joel and... Mm. First you met each other. Yes. Mm. And uh, he, and we started making music and then uh, Lars came in, and then Cody came in, and now the, this young boy came in. <laughs> and uh, but it's been a, it's been a long, long road. That's fantastic. You are a good band, and very handsome band, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, really. <laughs> you too. Thank you very much. I am very happy to be here, and to play music with you. Uh, it was a great pleasure for me. Uh, it, and it will it's be a honor. great souvenir for me also. Thanks for everything. It was an honor to play with you yeah. and we really hope you join us yeah. when we get to Turkey. Ah, yes. All We're right. going to do this, okay? Perfect. We're looking forward. <laughs> Gather around All the things that we admire to be here is where I wanted to be To abandon who I was Gather around As we're pushed towards the fire We've been tricked into believing that all Starts and ends within our walls
Shake your hand to the sides. Wake the animal inside of you. Right away. Let them face the one you mirror And the demons that now rest on your side They will leave you on your own Sevgili seyirciler, bir bölümümüzün daha sonuna geldik. Göteborg'daydık, Soen'le birlikteydik. Aramızda müzik vardı. Sizin de aranızda sınırlar değil, sevgi, hoşgörü, müzik ve sanat olsun. Hoşçakalın. <gülüyor>